All right, I should be live. Okay, let's talk about um, being a junior developer and working through a question because <clears throat> I've tutored two people so far and it's very easy to see where people get stuck because the new coder is very like, um, like a bulldog. Like they see the question, they immediately start searching for the answer before they even think about the different approaches to get to the solution um and i have an interview coming up soon so it's also good practice for me now these questions will not be this hard but i'm basically going to talk through uh pseudo coding with you to give you a good example of how you should work through these questions so when you do a lot of these questions that are online for example um they'll make it pretty clear what you should send back if things are not right get a bad input for example i already got like my multi-line comment open to start the pseudo code so i'm literally going to take these copy and paste and basically um this question is going to be like an if else statement if it meets all these conditions then we'll return something and if not then will just return an empty array. Um, and I realized I skipped a step. Let's read the question first. So we're gonna write a qu we're gonna write a function called get even element set property. Given an object and a key, get even element set property returns an array containing all of the even elements of the array located at the given key. So if you're already lost at this part, <laughs> I don't know if this video is gonna gonna help you. If you're already lost just reading this question, uh, you should probably turn this off and watch somebody else. But let's get started. Now, the reason that I think it's important is that a lot of the times, um, when you get like one of these drills, you will know what to do if you get a bad input, right? Like the question will say it. I'm just fortunate enough that these REPL drills that I'm doing right now, they just list it out. But um, for example, you should always know what your input is and, and what your output is uh, because you'll, you'll need to know that, especially when you start working with frameworks and different libraries and stuff. So the input is an object and the output is an array. And basically, let's move this up. Um, learn your shortcut so you don't have to constantly be clicking your mouse and for these conditions these are all going to be part of one long if statement right so we need to open sorry open an if statement with the following conditions all right these are the conditions now let's go under these basically what we need to do give ourselves like a shortcut so these actual conditions um, let's just write out the condition statements so if the array is empty it'll return an empty array the way that you check the length of an array is with uh, length so in our case we're going to hit the, the property at this object which is what we're selecting here the length is greater than zero, it's not empty. Um, if the array contains no even elements, we'll actually resolve this uh, when we use our filter to actually return something. So use array filter, the array will be empty if none of its items Meet the condition so we don't have to worry about that yet and then if the property at the given key is not an array it should return an empty array now let's say I don't know how to do this part right let's say that I don't I don't know how to tell whether or not something is an array so what you need to do is you need to know how to google this like how to troubleshoot and search for this so you would want to google something like how to tell if something is an array, JavaScript, or JS. 
um, and I found an article that I've already referenced a couple of times, so it's pretty easy to jump back into this. Uh, array is array is kind of tricky and kind of a pain in the ass to implement because this basically needs to already be an array to get like a decent answer from this. So I prefer to use instance of. So we would put our variable instance of array. And that's the syntax for this. It's super simple, really easy to remember. It'll be like muscle memory in no time. So what we will say is object key instance of an array. This will return true. If not, it'll return false. Um, and to check, to just check if there if there's a property that even exists on an object, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, that's has on property. So it's pretty easy. So we're saying basically we're gonna use this object, whatever object is passed in with the input. We're gonna take that object. Actually, I made a small typo there. We're gonna take this object and we're gonna check to see if it has the given key that was passed in into the function. Um, a key is a string. Let's update that. You can always come back to the pseudocode like as you go along. Don't feel like you have to get this right one time and then never touch it again. But what you should do as a good example like in any situation, if you're in an interview or something, you should actually like stick to this. This should be like the blueprint and pretty much you can just read straight through it, follow it and complete it. Um, so this is demonstrating that, you know, even if you don't have enough time to like solve the drill, you still know how to do it and you know how to talk through it, which is always good. Uh, a lot of new coders, like a lot of people that are taking their tech eval to get into a boot camp, really struggle with the the talking part and talking through all of these things, all these different steps. So the good thing here is that we figured out um, what to do if all these conditions are met. So let's kind of wrap this part up. Um, if these these conditions aren't met, Turn empty array and there are multiple ways to to handle like this like we could create a variable and you know if the variable if nothing ever happens to the variable it would just stay an empty array that could be the array that's returned here basically what I'm gonna do is you know if the conditions aren't met I'm just gonna return an empty array like quite literally like that that will be the syntax that um, otherwise we're just gonna run a array filter on this and then so if the conditions are met we will use array filter filter the array and return array items return all the items even and the condition that we're going to use for our filter be this for each item in the array pretty much going to do is say okay if the item is an odd number which you should know how to do if you don't know how to check if something's an odd number <laughs> In JavaScript, <laughs> turn this video off and go like Code Academy or something. I can't help you. Um, but we have some pretty some pretty clean pseudocode right here. This is this is good. So let's update this. I know this is pretty wordy, but it's only wordy because I just copied and pasted some stuff from the question to help us. So this is our pseudocode. We know what to do if those conditions are met. We know like how those conditions um, are translated into code. Uh, we know that we need to use array filter and we know the condition that needs to be run in an array filter that's gonna filter through, you know, this 
this array of, of numbers and only return the even numbers. So now, now that there's no more questions about how to solve this and there's like no more questions about the approach that we're gonna take, we can begin to code. And typically, this should only take you about, you know, 30 seconds to a minute for a question like this for interview questions and you know if you're working on drills specific to the nature of the work you'll be doing I would say maybe spend like a third of your time kind of roping the interviewer into working with you as you talk through these steps because people are more receptive to that but the thing about being in an interview is like if you don't ask questions no one's going to say anything because they'll assume that you need silence to work so it's really important that if you get stuck at any point trying to figure any of this stuff out you reflect that back onto the interviewer and you know you say well how do I figure out if you know an object actually has a property at a given key and if that exists you know they might tell you to just google it to say how to find out if an object has a property bam no, you want to you want to pseudo coding helps you figure out how to ask good enough questions that you won't spend a lot of time Googling um, so that can that can work against you as well. So we already know that this whole this whole um, thing is basically like a long if statement, right? That's how we're going to solve this. Um, let me actually. But I don't want to confuse y'all. We know we're using the if statement. <laughs> but what you want to do is get the structure set up first before you even start filling in the blanks. Like a lot of people, even though they know they're using an if else statement, they will stop right here and start typing stuff. And that is never, that's not a good thing. That's just not how uh, development works. Just go ahead and get the full structure of the solution out of the way. And make sure it's there. Make sure this this scaffolding is here. The foundation of how you're going to do this should already be here. Now we already have all of these conditions, but let's do this in a way that's like most appropriate, right? So if any if any of these conditions any of these conditions come back as false, you should stop the process. Just immediately return an empty array. So just to be thoughtful um if the ob if the property doesn't exist on the object obviously there's no point in even checking if the property is an array or what the length is so let's check that first all right so if the property exists then we're all good now if the property exists we need to check if it's an array right do that next and then followed by that now that we know that property exists and we know that the value at that property is an array we need to check if the array is empty or not just super easy um so if the length is greater than zero something's inside the array period don't you uh greater than or equal to because that means that if it's equal to zero if it's empty then this will still come back true and this will basically kill everything we're trying to do here so we need it to definitely most definitely be greater than zero not greater than or equal to and we don't need it to be less than we need to know that something's inside this array now um what a lot of people learn is to just give things like short nicknames so if you wanted to say, you know, uh, let unfiltered elements equal this input that we're getting uh, at the top here, you can totally do that. I typically do that, but in this case, this solution to this is going to be so short, readable, that it's not really worth it to, you know, create these variables as shortcuts. But um, for a more complex problem, definitely create like multiple variables to reference 
different values and variables that you'll have along the way. In this case, we know that object key is an array. In an ideal world, object key should represent an array um, based off of the question that we're reading. So we know what our, know what our, our input is, which is an object and a string, and we're now in control of this array that we're going to output. So that's what object key is, in case you're confused or in case I'm going too fast. <clears throat> now, we want to return all of the even elements of the array. So this is no this this is no different than if we were going to type like you know um any any variable mod 2 equal in 0. The only difference is we're going to use filter which is going to do this for every single item inside this array. And I'll show you the syntax for this, which is pretty straightforward. So we're going to use a arrow. I forget what it's called. I don't know. Arrow syntax, arrow function. But we're going to use an arrow function. So item represents each item in the array. And for each item in the array, it needs to meet this condition in order to be returned this new array. So for example, we were to copy this test text down here, um, which is also really important. You always want to just create like a little test. Now, on line 22 right here, we're returning this filter for every single item in the array. I'm going to go through, see if um, that's an even number or an odd number. So in this case, we go through a thousand, that's an even number. 11 is an odd number. 50 is an even number, 17 is an odd number. That's literally how this function is going to work. It's going to go through one at a time on each item. So an alternative to doing this would be having a for loop, uh, just creating like a variable with an empty array. For every item, you know, as we iterate through a for loop, Know, push the even items into a new array and then return that. If that makes sense. There's multiple ways to do this. I'm just using filter because I would be doing the same thing with the for loop anyways. And once you get to like a certain level, this is way easier and more readable. I mean, it literally says dot filter, which tells anyone else that's working with me that I'm filtering. And for each item in the array that I'm filtering, I need that item to be an even number or I'm not going to return it. Um, and that is, that's pretty much how you write like readable code. So a for loop is also a solution to this, but it's not as clear cut um, as just using right filter, which I believe is the appropriate way to solve this quick and easy. So we want to run our test. You always want to run a test. Um, even if the interviewer doesn't ask you or even if you know even like code wars lets you run tests before you submit your solution there's nothing worse than submitting the solution and getting like red x's or whatever just getting it wrong right off the bat because you didn't test anything out so got our test let's run it it looks like this is working now we can submit or if you're in an interview now you can move on to the next question and um, if you have any questions about becoming better at pseudocoding, you need to basically dedicate time to doing things like this. It's always really important right off the bat to know what your input is and what your output is. Because in an interview, um, you know, some people will just let you run into a wall. Some people will kind of hold your hand and guide you along the way. But most people will want to be like hospitable and respectful so if you don't if you don't do these things then you'll never actually get to ask questions about these things so if you were just stuck you know if you're just you're just stuck and you don't have any of this stuff then you really don't have any questions to follow up with you don't have any way to demonstrate that like even if you didn't know how to do the question You'll be open and willing to learn how to do the question so the the pseudocode just opens up um 
a bunch of ways for you to bond better with the interviewer and ways for you, you to demonstrate like enthusiasm, your aptitude, um, you know, your passion for coding, uh, and it, it basically prevents you from getting flustered because if you can't solve something with pseudocode, you already know you can't solve the drill. So, you know, if, if, if this was as far as I could get, just figuring out this one if statement, I would have just scaffolded this, just had it out, you know, return, you know, do something. And I would have moved on to the next question. Like if I didn't, if I didn't know how to solve it, I would just moved on after I pseudocoded and got like as far as I could. Um, and that's definitely going to happen sometimes. But in a real life scenario, when you stop right here, someone else on your team can pick up and fill in the blanks that you don't know, fill in those gaps. So there's nothing wrong with doing that or taking that approach as well. But definitely uh, pseudocoding in and of itself demonstrates a lot more than someone that is just able to, you know, look instantly at a question and just solve it. People want to know how you think and they want to know that you talk through, think through problems instead of just throwing things at a wall and seeing what sticks. Um, I hope that was helpful and plan on starting actual show around doing javascript drills with devs of all skill levels so a lot of things that you see on the channel won't be this easy or straightforward and i also have you know other people working alongside me and i'll be asking them questions about their process and how they work through things so let's go ahead and submit um if you're interested in these uh questions that i'm working on uh, you can sign into REPL, go to student, and basically you just want to look for the auto graded exercises you can enroll into. Um, it's changed a lot, so I wish I had a better explanation. But yeah, if you haven't enrolled into anything, you'll just see a bunch of courses. Just pick auto graded exercises. Uh, a lot of them are kind of repetitive, but the repetition gets that muscle memory into your head that you really need as a as a newbie coder. You know, as a code newbie but uh yeah i hope that was helpful i'll be back